Everybody to Pro League here, the round four finals here between SKT and KT. We are right now tied up two and two. Zest taking out Sue. But who is going to be next up for SK Telecom? Oh, I'm not sure. It's going to be interesting. It is on Terraform. So who do they want to use? Is it going to be an, a Protoss Sniper, a PvP, -er, or is it going to be a Terran player? A few different potential choices. Um, I think it's going to be revealed right now. So let's take a look at who they want to defeat Zest with. Classic. This would have been my pick 100%, and I like it a lot. Tintos coming in. Trying to take out Zest in a PvP. Both these guys are pretty damn good PvP, I have to say. We're we're in for a very nice game. And this oh, is yeah. going to put, you know, a big lead for either of these teams. You know, whoever wins is going to get ahead 3-2. This map creates hyper-aggressive PvPs most of the time, though. Taking a third base is tough. Taking a fourth base is just basically impossible. It's out of the question. So we're going to see whose build order gets an advantage and how the, the player who gets a disadvantage responds, essentially. I know that sounds kind of weird. Super but weird. Basically, the early game... <laughs> the early game, like, you know, how greedy a player is or how aggressive a player is or what tech they choose, is going to give one player an, an inherent advantage in this matchup. And the response, you know, is important. And what can they do to kind of change what, what happened? Because this matchup is not going to be like both players taking a fast expand and then taking a third base slowly into charge and colossi. If that happens, that would be insane. There's way too many lines of sight block because there's so much variance on this map. The third base is so hard to take in this matchup. We have seen third base on this map before, but it's pretty rare. Well, guys, we're going to jump straight into game number five now between Classic and Zest on Terraform. Up here in the top left in the red for SK Telecom T1, he is classic. And to the bottom right in blue for KT Rolster, it is Zest, the King Slayer. He's done one, he needs more than that. Mm, and thing to note about classic as well, recently, just over a week ago now, he did defeat SOS and Hero in Code S, yep. defeating them both in some pretty epic PVPs. I actually watched all those games and it was classic actually trying to play more defensive oriented styles and go towards the late game and uh, take big maxed out fights. I feel like this is not the map for that kind of style, but you know, he's obviously a great player through all aspects of PvP. Mm, it's it's hard to hold the third or at least you know, be effectively defending your third base considering it has like three entry points of aggression. Like, But beyond that, you can defend pretty well because there's a lot of awkward choke points on this map. Which is why we do see so many effective mech players, especially against Zerg on this one. Yeah. It's really about where you're positioning your army. You need to get vision of where your opponent's army is and be in the best, you know, spot in terms of defending uh, whatever, you know, pathway is going to choose in attacking your base. Observer coverage is so important should this map go late game. You need to be able to see war prisms coming. You need to be able to see the angles of attack. And you never want to walk into a line of sight blocker when you don't know what's on the other side. I mean, I, I, I say this a lot, but in this matchup, especially uh, Myungstrik versus Hero, in the round of eight, we saw uh, the game one. I can't remember which player won it. Just based on the fact that there were stalkers on the other side of a line, line of sight blocker. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be really careful about that because especially in PvP, stalkers do bonus damage to stalkers. Stalkers kill stalkers very quickly. It's like that fight will snowball out of control if he has two or three more stalkers than you and you walk into there on move command not knowing what is on the other side. Interesting build here out of Zest, going to delay that second gas for a bit here. Not taking it, there it goes, after the Cyber Knight score. Going to give him a lot of extra minerals to perhaps make a second gateway. Uh, I thought maybe Zest, or rather Classic, was going to hide a pylon, but decided not to. Well, for now, it looks like Classic will be the one scouting as well. Nothing from Zest so far. And yeah, he did delay that second gas, but he's going to completely saturated from the get-go, whereas uh, Classic did go for that two saturation with the later three on both. Gets the slightly faster Cybernetics core, just a slight mix up there. 
I still think we're going to see a second gate from Gust, although I guess that window of time is going to pass in just a moment here. Adding another pylon now. And here comes a scout for Classic. So all he's going to really see is that the Mothership Core is on the way, but it's not a rushed one. And if he checks for that third pylon, that would be really smart. Is he going to do it? Looks like well, he's going to see everything. Yeah. yeah, he's got a fair idea of where everything is, so he should feel pretty safe about his situation. And he's going to throw down a Stargate. And Zest is not going to know about this at all. So going to be Twilight versus Stargate. This uh, pylon for Classic going to go around and check just to make sure there's nothing hidden that he doesn't know about. For example, a hidden Dark Shrine. I don't think that Zest has plans of going DTs. It looks like he's going to go blink-oriented. He has no probe on the map to hide a Dark Shrine, and making one in the main base is obviously one of the scariest and riskiest things you can do in a PvP matchup. Line of Sight Blocker here going to help out again, but there's a Mothership core coming behind this. Yeah, he's not going to be finding much here. He's going to have to wait. Defend at the top of the ramp with two Skulkers. Still, it's going to deny any sort of scouting. This Oracle should be able to get out, do some harassment. Zest's going to have to pull back here in a bit. He knows the timing on that Stargate. Wants to get the Mothership Core back at home, at least for a post on other cards. He's got one pylon up there in a kind of a wonky position. I think it's the spot, Warp Prisms, Oracles, anything that might come his way, more than to hide anything. Yeah, that's, it's certainly a, a decent scouting sort of pylon to just make sure nothing's going to be coming that you're not detecting. Yeah, his Robo is so late that it's going to be the only way he can really spot you know, move outs like this. Here comes the first Oracle across the map. Just going to stick on one and then goes for his own Twilight here. Yeah, an interesting choice. Probably delayed blink, but obviously going to be pretty smart if you can hold on to a Nexus with this. It's going to be hard pressed to find much damage. Photo and Overcharge is available and will no doubt be activated the moment he sees this Oracle. There it is. Going to have to back off. Pulls back for now. He's it looks like he was looking for that ar uh, that Sentry, but two Stalkers denies. The Oracle not really able to get much damage. It will be annoying out on the map. You know, he has to be constantly thinking about it, but especially once he gets Blink, will be a bit more safe against that. Yes. He's getting the faster Nexus and the faster Robotics tech out here, so. And the faster Blink. Like, if I'm Classic right now, I'm starting to get pretty terrified. You know, it was a late Oracle that did nothing, and now he doesn't have enough space to work with to get his own Blink to pressure with. He doesn't have anything. That he's, he's basically behind in every regard. He has no tools to be to, to harass, no tools to make up for the light nexus. He might even want to like try to get a rushed forge or something. Like that's one thing he could try to do, but he's behind in every sense of the word at this yeah. point in time. I think it'll mostly just be a passive game from here on outwards because I mean sure Zest has a lead right now, but it's not a game breaking lead either. The Nexus will be a little bit further ahead. And he is up in supply. Oh actually De uh sorry, Classic's up in supply right now, actually warping in some extra stalkers just to be safe. But uh, it should be a pretty standard stabilized game from this point going into two base. And this is going to be so fun because Terraform is crazy when it comes to two base versus two base turtling. And then how do I take a third base? Where do I take it? If you take the one that's towards the middle of the map, obviously the mineral line is exposed. But if you take the one that's below or above your natural, depending on your position, as you said before, you know, there's multiple entrances into that base. There's a lot of choke points, though, too. So Zest, you really have to be careful. Zest is saving up so much minerals and gas here. I think he wants to wait and see exactly what Classic is doing before he really commits to anything. But at the same time, even going for three warp ends, three stalkers on his three gateways, he's still got a decent amount left over. Yeah, and not building anything out of the robo except that one observer. Oh, oh my god, he's going to be so careful here. That was ambitious. Well, it was a good snipe there by Zest. I'm a bit surprised he waited so long. There was an Observer watching for so long that Oracle was there. I kind of see it, this Rock skill, and that's a good move for Classic if he wants to go into a longer game. He's got a rushed, faster Forge, which is one of the things I said earlier that somebody gets back into this game. I feel like this game has somewhat equalized, though. Uh, the worker count's pretty much dead even, and Zest is going to be the player that takes a third Nexus Whoa. first. Wow. All I right. guess this is what this is about. Just yep. waiting for so long with some extra resources, but not spending it. Waiting until Classic kind of has no threats on the map, and he wants to make sure that Classic's kind of sitting back in his chair saying, okay, we're going to transition into a longer game. And then he takes a very greedy, fast third. It does make a lot of sense, especially now that he saw his, uh, his rocks have been destroyed as well. So it's kind of like Classic showed that he wants to delay Zest moving across the map. So Classic's playing defensively. Zest says, okay, this is works for me. I take a third base. I'm seeing a faster uh, Colossus tech as well from Classic right now. Ooh, very charge. fast charge. 
Oh man, this is um, this is really going to rip apart any sort of fast attack Classic tries to do. And if he tries to go for a third base, Zest can just add a warp prism and really wow. rip things apart with the Zealot Harass. Yeah, it looks like it's just going to be that hardcore like Charge Lord, Archon sort of style. He wants to crush what Classic has earlier than later. What do you think about this for this map as well? We were talking about some awkward chokes, especially if Zest takes a bad fight, like within the line of sight blockers or at one of these chokes. It's not going to go all too well for him. I kind of like this. Uh, I always you know, use this analogy of almost like when you go in PvP, if you go for the Colossus rush with the faster uh, range and you get quick upgrades out and you keep your army all together, it's like you make a fist with your army and it has to all be together and always tries to punch something down. Whereas Zest's army is more like the open hand. It's going to be able to be you know, more flexible. It's got five fingers. You, know, you can harass the main. You can harass the third base. You're more mobile. But both armies are eventually going to have to converge into the same sort of composition. And I worry that with Classic's very late third base and Zest's harassment potential together, he's going to struggle. Well, it's all going to come down to Zest finding the damage now because he, if he's going to choose this sort of uh, army, he doesn't go late game with it. He has to go for the kill now. And this is a scary place for Classic to be right now. He's pretty confident in the fight. I don't oh. know about this. If he had charge right now, this would be a one-sided fight. But because it's not ready yet, we do see some really good micro here by Classic. Now it's finished. And he's actually trying to surround this. His pylon being here is huge as well. Targeting oh. down that Colossus. Link coming in. He has to get that Colossus. But taking a lot of shots on his stalkers at the same time. But he will take it down. This is going to be game-ending damage. He can now no longer hold on to his third base. And Zest... Wow, With look those at that. gates, wins it. Oh. Look at that. So many Archons in the way. Four Archons and behind this. All he needs is Zealots and try and crash on that natural. I really like how Zest played this. I think his, he just had a more flexible composition. He saw a hole and Classic just overconfident in that engagement. If he had backed up and waited for an additional Colossus, I think it would have been a better spot. <laughs> look kind of dancing in front of Classic. He has to be careful. He's taking a lot of damage here. Oh, man. There's so many Archons behind this. These Zealots have no shot at defending. The only thing that really is, is in Classic's favor right now is that Colossus. And it's not going to be there for long with a blink forward here. And Archons can now clean up these light zealots and a few more warpins. He's got so many gateways. That is going to be game. Zest will eliminate Classic as well. Wow, going to take out a huge player from SKT. If Classic's not. still having trouble accepting it. Yeah, one of the best players in SKT, one of the big hitters, is a scary thing. We we'll probably have to see innovation come out after this. I don't know. But I think so. He's the last player. Yep. Down to the last player now. There's another blink forward, and that is going to be game. GG. Zest making the KT fangirl scream, <laughs> forcing out KT's last player. It will no doubt be innovation. Really nicely done. Just the timing of that entire build. So well thought out, and I'm I'm kind of even rethinking my own decision to, you know, maybe not send out Zest here. Maybe they thought that Classic would come out on this map against him, and he's like, oh, I've got a really nice build plan for this map. I can take him down. No, no big deal. Yeah, always a, always a risky sort of move to send out a, a, a mirror match sniper like that, especially when I feel like a map that's going to favor a Terran player to come out and do a lot more. But we'll see what happens next. Uh, no doubt going to be innovation. I, I, there's no other player left over that's really going to fill his shoes. I feel like the biggest issue for Classic in that game was just his build. He simply went for a late Oracle at past, uh, past Oracle relevancy. Like he, I think he was almost expecting that Zest was going to move out and he was going to find damage while he was gone, but instead the Oracle just runs in and gets countered hard. And then we're in this position where it's like, oh, well, you're just behind in every way. You don't have a force to get a Nexus. You're going Oracle into late blink, and you've already scouted that I'm going blink. Just everything kind of doesn't really make sense there. It's, it, he was in a bad position for the rest of the game as a result. Zest made all the right choices. Yeah, certainly so. Next map is going to be Echo as well, mind you. So, mm -hmm. Good map. It's a good map for innovation to come out and try to get the job done. Yeah, it's definitely a decent one. But, guys, we are going to jump to a 10-minute commercial break. Stick with us. We'll be right back.